In this video, we're going to be discussing the first order RL and RC circuit natural response. As we talked early in earlier videos, <clears throat> a circuit could is turned on, and that's uh, the response from a turn on is called step response. And then it operates in a steady state after the effect of the power on has stabilized. And then at some point we have to turn it off. And that's the, what happens to the circuit, the current and the voltage is referred to as a natural response. And that's when we are shutting down the circuit until all the power has been consumed and the, the device is completely off. So there's a period that we look at the natural response. This video is focused on looking at natural response for a rather simple circuits where we either have a R and a C, so an RC circuit, or we have um, L and an R for an RL circuit. So those, those are the two uh, types we go. As, as we've done in the previous um, case where we were talking about the step response, these are uh, the, the feeding circuit, the circuit that is feeding the capacitor and the resistor in, in the case of a capacitor is going to be a feminine equivalent. So you may have a circuit that's much more complex in your circuit, but you can reduce it using feminine equivalent to this circuit. So you can use all the work we are doing here and all the relationships derived here. Now, if you've got an inductor, if you look at it, we have actually a Norton equivalent here so we, we reduce the circuit to a norton so we can use all the, the circuitry we have here now let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to do um, basically in this particular case we've got we've got a case where the switch is connected with the capacitor and as we know and this is usually is said that this is in this condition for a long time and we know when this pin is in the long in this condition for a long time the, the, the capacitor acts as an open and will accept full charge V, v of th. So the initial condition for this would be that the capacitor voltage is equal to whatever voltage is across the source. Um, so, and, then, and then at time zero, this flipped over. So let's now take a look at this thing. If uh, we look at this um, uh, after time z t0, t zero, which means now we are connected in this direction and we've got just the resistor and the capacitor. Since the circuit after the switch is flipped has no source, independent source in it, then it's a natural response. And then we go around the loop, which is C, D, V, D, T, the voltage basically, the, uh, the current through the capacitor is equal to the current through the resistor. That's how we write the equation. And then, although we don't go, this is a basically a derivative of voltage. This is the voltage. So this is a simple differential equation, first order differential equation. We solve it and that is the answer. Now, anytime we have a circuit that looks like this, we can use this equation to find voltage uh, uh, across the capacitor and, and in turn across the resistor when T is larger or equal to zero. We can plot that like we've done earlier and you will see that uh, the voltage actually will start at the initial condition. In this particular case, the voltage is equal to V thevenin. And as the time goes by, it drops by one over third to, <clears throat> to it's one over third. So it drops roughly about 60 some percent after one time constant. And if you remember, the time constant is RC because that is the power of E. <clears throat> so when T becomes equal to RC, you've dropped by a to one third of the original value or dropped by 66. And if you get down here, you've dropped by 90%. And by three T, which most of the time say you were almost uh, flattened out. So even though this curve will never get to zero, usually at three time, three time constant, we say that the effect, the circuit is effectively completely shut off. Now, when you go to the RL circuit, uh, the process is similar, except in this particular case, we, we like to have our source shown as a source circuit shown as a Norton and the switch has been closed for a long time and if you recall when the switch has been closed for a long time the current through L 
it's gonna be basically this is gonna be a short so all the current that is in here is flowing through the inductor <clears throat> so when the switch is opened this inductor will feed its current to uh, the rest of the circuit okay so now let's go ahead and take a look at this um, quickly and to see if we can kind of make sense of it so so the eye that is going through this is I is going to be going this way so the initial condition is built up to be exactly like the I short circuit once we flip the switch once the switch is open then the inductor will start feeding the resistive circuit and then the current through the resistor has to be equal to the current through the inductor um, basically or I'm sorry the voltage the voltage in the resistor has to be equal to the voltage in that so or, or you can do a kvl around this loop either way so l di dt plus ir equal to zero you solve that and you have this equation so we can kind of use this equation if we can get a circuit that looks like that in this particular case i behaves that way because i was at the initial condition was uh, what the source was and over time after one time constant it drops by 60% after two constant, by 90% after three constants, like 99% uh, or 90 large numbers. So most of the time, by the time we get to the three time constant, we're gonna say um, it's reached zero. So, so that, that three time constant, it would be whatever I zero was divided by e to the power of three, which is roughly 27. So you're down to uh, relatively to like 3% or less. Okay, so that basically what it is. Let's put this in practice. Let's say, let's say you've got a circuit given to you that kind of looks like this, and you're asked to find what happens to I of t uh, after t larger than zero. So the switch has been in position A for a long time, then they're gonna flip it to switch to, to location B, and they're asking you to find a response. So the very first thing you gotta do you see, just before the switch is flipped, what was the situation? So if we look at just before the switch is flipped, we're going to have basically a um, case where um, just before the switch is closed. So, so we got a uh, 8K in here. Now the capacitor is going to be open, right? If it's been in this position for a long time, the voltage has stabilized, the current has stabilized. So the capacitor is really an open, and then we have a resistor. So that's all we got in V of T of cross the capacitor at time zero. The initial condition is gonna be whatever the voltage is here. This is a simple voltage divider that we can solve and find out what is the initial voltage across uh, across that uh, this, uh, this voltage divider, okay? So, uh, so in this particular case, it would be VC of zero is equal to 15 volts uh, times 12 divided by 20. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so if you solve that, you will find out that the initial condition is nine volts. So we got that. Step two, step two for us is to figure out, is this a step response or is this a natural response? The way we look at that, we look at after after the switch is closed after the switch is moved that time zero is going to move to here so we're going to draw the circuit after the switch has been has changed position and if you look at it after the switch has been posi changed position our circuit looks like this so now that our circuit looks like this at this point uh, we notice that there's no source in it if there is no source, then we have to look to this being a natural response, right? So, so once we have that, then all we need to do is uh, we notice that um, for this particular case, you got an 8K here and 12K there. So if I try to make it look like the circuit we had earlier, I have to put the 8K and 12k in parallel, so 80 in parallel with 12 of gives me 4.8k. So the resistance 4.8k and the capacitor is 200 microfarad. 
So, <clears throat> so once we have that, <clears throat> then uh, we can simply go up here um, and use, in this particular case, we have an RC circuit. So we're gonna go up here and find the RC circuit equation and use that to figure out what is the voltage across the capacitor. So the voltage across the capacitor after time larger than, after zero, is gonna be equal to, um, uh, basically uh, equal to the voltage uh, initial condition, which is nine volt times E to the minus T over R times C, which is basically 200 times 10 to the minus six times 4.8 times 10 to the 10 to the uh, 3 if we clean this whole thing up we will get 9 e to the minus t over 0.96 now if you go back and figure out what was the question they were asking us the question they were asking us is, is how you know what is the current that flows through the um, 12k so what we could do is uh, basically go back and redraw the circuit hopefully you'll see that you've got a capacitor you've got the 12k here and you've got the 8k here and they're looking for the current through the 12k so all we have to do is find we have the voltage here v of t so the i through the 12k which which is the what what we're looking for i of t would be basically 9 e to the minus t over 0.96 divided by 12 thousand and that becomes the amp that is flowing through the 12k okay sometime you will see that the circuit is uh, might be a little more complicated and not set up this way so all you have to do is simplify your circuit such that this is an R thevenin. So this part of the circuit, sometimes it's more complex. So what you want to do is uh, with respect to the capacitor, you want to turn it into a thevenin equivalent and you're done. And um, that brings us to the end of the RL and RC circuit natural response. Natural response is when the um, there is no source left in our system after the change.